obviously I'm very sad for Kitty. Kitty is an incredibly talented person um, who clearly has been battling some demons and um, has not won that battle. Tēnā koutou koutou, this is Toby Manhaya with a special episode of Gone by Lunchtime. That was Chris Hipkins, the Prime Minister, speaking this morning from the Beehive Theatre at following news that many of us woke up to this morning that Kerry Allen, the Minister for Justice, uh, had uh, been charged with careless driving and with resisting arrest. She was involved in a car crash. She was the only person involved, it seems, in a car crash late on Sunday night and uh, was taken into police custody um, until 1am. She was over the infringement notice level for... uh, alcohol, uh, not over the higher limit that makes it a criminal offence and there are no charges being laid there. But it also came, and that's what Hipkins is touching there, at the end of a a really uh, complex and intense and uh, what I think Hipkins called an extreme emotional period of extreme emotional distress. Uh, Anyone who follows politics has, has followed much of this. It seemed like the kind of uh, dovetailing, perhaps, of both personal and political challenges. Uh, when Chris Hipkins was away in China, there were reports about uh, Kerry Allen's um, interactions with staffers um, over the last few years. At the same time, she'd had a personal uh, breakup and had taken some time off uh, to look after herself on that front. The political implications doesn't feel like exactly the time to get into that too hard. I'm talking to you just after lunchtime on Monday, July 24, and by the time this podcast comes out into the world or about the time it comes out in the world, Chris Hipkins will have given his post-Cabinet press conference at which he will announce the reallocation of portfolios that she vacates, which are justice, um, regional development, as well as associate transport. The associate finance portfolio, in fact, she'd only been awarded very recently, um, appointed to when Michael Wood uh, himself resigned over uh, the shares he did not divest himself of in Auckland Airport. And that is, I think, Alan makes it, if you count Kerry Allen, uh, Mika Whaiteri, Stuart Nash and Michael Wood, that's that's too many ministers for any government to be losing, uh, too many for one prime minister in six months. Certainly, Hipkins has indicated he won't look to bring new people into his ministry, which was the same thing he did with Wood. So there are going to be some people with some pretty weighty responsibilities, though, of course, we're very close to an election now, so uh, their responsibilities will be limited. As far as Kerry Allen is concerned, um, I first met her in the 2017 campaign. Uh, She was a participant in our Candidates' Diary uh, series. I asked people from various parties to recommend the sort of emerging talent, the people who looked interesting and uh, bright and might be able to write a few colourful words for the spin-off during the course of the campaign. Chloe Swarbrick uh, was the Greens representative. Erica Stanford wrote for us from the National Party. Uh, New Zealand First didn't reply to my contact. Um, and it was Kiri Tapu Allen, who um, was the Labour candidate in the Candidate Diaries series. And it was terrific. Um, all of them were terrific. And they told the stories of the reasons that they were doing what they were doing, uh, the, what they encountered along the way, including in Kiri Allen's case, uh, just about vomiting when she had to do her first live TV appearance. Kerry was elected on the on the list, and uh, she couldn't quite overcome it, the formidable Anne Tolly in East Coast. And uh, in her maiden speech, she talked about her upbringing in a, a, a mixed family of ten. Uh, she went on to she left school, I think, at the age of sixteen, worked for KFC. She eventually became a lawyer and uh, made her way into the Labour Party and into politics. And one of her mentors was was Michael Cullen, who who made a big impression on her. We, she went on to, she was elected uh, in the in the electorate in 2020. Um, as everybody knows, she was appointed to cabinet uh, almost immediately after that by Jacinda Ardern. She also confronted some really sort of daunting, incredible 
health challenges. Um, she was diagnosed uh, with cervical cancer um, and she talked about it um, confronting mortality uh, face up. That was just after actually she sort of surged into full public view as the minister for for the emer for emergency response when she was. You remember in March 2021, there was that tsunami threat down the east and there had to be evacuations and she suddenly appeared, had that kind of immediately dashing, almost built a kind of cult following in the course of one day, I think. And, the, and um, you know, she really sort of put down a marker there as being someone who who, who had quite a, quite a great deal of uh, mana, I think. Um, yeah, the illness was a was a big thing. She was she she was doing tests during that period that she was responding to the to the tsunami, uh, and um, she used that to she detailed some of her journey there and um, uh, on social media, but also to encourage uh, encourage women to get cervical smears which she'd left for too long, as well as um, as well as men to have a have a get a get a prod done, as she put it. Um, uh, uh, it may just one day save your life, is what she said. We had a um, we had a reunion of the candidate diaries in here at the spin-off in November last year, and it was it was really interesting. All all three women spoke uh, very candidly and insightfully about their experiences in politics and in parliament. This is what Kerry Allen said, and she's sort of gesturing towards Chloe Swarbrick in this in this clip. This is what she said about. Uh, the reality she encountered in Parliament. I call. I sort of talk about the way to her side of it. Mm. Spiritually, I just like my feet. I've constantly got to ground my feet in this job. Chloe's mm. absolutely right. Every single day, you chuck your boots on, you feel like it is the most. It is an absolute privilege, mm. and it is a heartbreaking privilege. I don't yeah. think that you can separate the two out. In the middle of last year, in June. 2022, uh, Kerry Allen was promoted again by Jacinda Ardern to, to one of the really important roles in any cabinet, which is the Minister of Justice. Uh, and she, among other things, dealt with hate speech responses, some of the alcohol law stuff. When Jacinda Ardern resigned at the start of the year, uh, her star had risen such that she was talked about alongside Michael Wood as a potential candidate, someone who might, uh, that if it wasn't to be Chris Hipkins, who might uh, go for the Labour leader and thereby Prime Minister. She she was clear that that wasn't something that she contemplated, but it is, it does speak to the levels to which she had uh, ascended, that, that she was in that conversation at all. This year has been a, a much bumpier one for Kerry Allen. She a series of, of, of um, unwelcome headlines. There was in in April, uh, she issued an apology over remarks she'd made at a farewell do for Marty Dunlop, uh, her then fiance, at RNZ. Uh, Allen had criticised the the culture around Marty journalists at the broadcaster. Um, she said. She urged them to quote look at it. Urged RNZ to look at its culture, and she she apologised. Although she was very clear that she was not speaking in her capacity as a minister, but she acknowledged that uh, it could be perceived as interference in in in, in RNZ. Then a few weeks later, there was the story that came from One News uh, about Ming Foon having contributed, donated to her campaign in 2020. Uh, that was one of the reasons that that was interesting. It was declared. There was nothing, no suggestion by anyone that it was anything anything illegal about it. But she had by then become Minister of Justice. The, the uh, Race Relations Commissioner is appointed by the Minister of Justice. Uh, Ming Foon, as it happened, uh, was the one under greater pressure over that. But... Um, it obviously wasn't a, a welcome headline for her. Then in June, we had those headlines, which I talked about earlier, uh, through a series of stuff pieces relating to her interactions with staff across a number of departments. Uh, there was quote unquote claims of screaming and shouting uh, and various other just, uh, uh, I mean, uh, suggestions that, that of, of intimidation and so on. Uh, Ellen rejected those. Uh, Chris Hipkins, who was in China at the time, said he'd talked to her when, when, she, when, when he returned and reminded everyone that she was an incredibly competent and talented person. Then, then 
Carrie Ellen went on, on, on leave for a period of time, after which Hipkins met up with her again. And he announced she would be coming back to Parliament last Monday. Uh, Carrie Ellen apologised uh, for anyone who uh, had been upset by her interaction in the workplace, and it looked as though a line was being drawn under a bunch of stuff. Carrie Ellen had also been through the breakup. There had been a lot of stuff going on. This was an idea that hopefully, hopefully it was a, something of a fresh start. And, you know, on Wednesday last week, uh, I think it was Wednesday last week, there was this, um, it was a law and order themed week on the part of the government and Kerry Allen was beside Chris Hipkins announcing a new specific events for RAM raids, some changes in terms of the way that 12 and 13 year olds would be uh, assessed. Now, whatever people thought about those announcements, there was certainly a lot of suggestion that they were rushed. Uh, Kerry Allen looked really composed, she looked like she was on top of her material. Uh, in a week when some of that material did seem a little expedited, she, 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 she looked to be back to, her, back to her best. As it turned out, she wasn't. Uh, and uh, we don't know, and it's pointless to try and speculate at this point on what happened in the interim. But I do know that on Saturday morning, she was posting from her kids' football game. And then on Sunday night, uh, what happened, happened. And, you know, uh, we'll find out more, no doubt. I think Chris Hopkins is quite right when he says that it's indefensible and it's obviously untenable to have a Minister of Justice, certainly probably any minister who's facing charges that include careless driving, that include drinking over the uh, level that is acceptable, the lower level will be it, um, and then driving that has facing charges for resisting arrest to remain. She's going to go and uh, go. She's gone home now and she's thinking about her political future. Um, and who knows, there may be a way back for her. Uh, I suppose, it's, I just don't think at this point there's any value in any further speculation around that. I will say, and finish this with something, with another clip from that candidate's diary, um, and this is by no means to suggest that um, it's linked to what happened because we don't know. But I think it is worth reminding ourselves from time to time about the kind of uh, immense pressures that... MPs on all sides in the Parliament find themselves under. This is Kerry Allen talking about the kind of waves of um, of anger, of uh, uh, vitriol that politicians have faced in the last year or so. Um, she said that she could deal with it when it was online. She could even deal with it when it was um, when it was just her, but when it, when family were involved, that it became something else entirely. There's so much vitriol and rubbish that goes on. The thing that does get me a little bit, though, is when I'm with my children mm. and I'm threatened. Even by myself, I don't mind. I mean, I can manage that. But it's when I'm with my kids. And that up the temperature over the past oh, year um, to the extent people were following you, I would have to park in public places and literally wait and have 111 on your phone and those types of things. That stuff when you're by yourself is like, okay, but if you've got little kids in your car and they're seeing you or they see you scared, or not scared, but just like, <laughs> right, <laughs> you know, you, that's that's not kind of something I think is acceptable. Um, a, a lot, you know, in my weekends I try to spend as much time as I can with my kids, usually doing worky stuff, but um, at least you're out. But I just remember this one engagement. I was at a Bunnings and, um, you know, got the kids with the bloody sausages and they got tomato sauce over there and we're running through trying to get, I don't know, nails or whatever it is that we're doing. Uh, and just literally being kind of cornered in by two people who were very aggrieved around mandates, um, but locking us in, myself, my partner, and our two kids at the end of a row in Bunnings. And, you know, having a, you know, it's interesting. You just kind of have to, and that wasn't this, and that incident's not isolated. I think I just found that one a little bit egregious because I didn't quite know how to manage it with my babies. But I don't like that. I don't like that that's become the state of New Zealand. Like I said, the thing that I find most energizing about why we all do this job is because we give a damn about our people. I'm a real grassroots politician. I love being on the ground. I love our people. It's where I get my energy from. Um, but yeah, something's changed. Mm -hmm. 